Hey friends, just wanted to let you know that we're going to get started here in just a few minutes, but um, we've got a few more people we're expecting, so we're going to just keep letting folks in. In the meantime, you are listening to the beautiful Jamie Harris out on Spotify world. I'm loving it. <laughs> Nicotine and caffeine shaking with fear Just praying for another day to stay in the clear Well, I never thought I'd find God here Well, I never thought I'd draw sober breath Sorry, you had to stare at me for a second. I'm going to keep letting folks in while I do our intro. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on Farms Virtual Connections Tuesday Tech Talk. I see you waving, Eileen. <laughs> um, we're super, super, super excited about today's Tech Talk. Um, we had a little bit of a break there, just a little bit of a break. I um, hope you all got some rest and we're trying out your various... Um, uh yoga positions or i don't know maybe that was just me i was supposed to be doing that i was not doing that not even a little bit um but um we are coming at you today on a topic that is near and dear to my heart and we dance around at pretty much every one of our tech talks but we never really have drilled into the nitty gritty of it. And so I'm super excited about today's talk. Um, we are amped and ready for your questions. But before I get started, it, for those of you who are here for the first time, you have ventured into Farms Virtual Connections. Farm is the Folk Alliance region Midwest and Virtual Connections is our um, virtual connection experience. We've been hosting webinars and peer group sessions and these tech talks um, pretty much since lockdown. And um, although I don't like the term lockdown, but since COVID came to town and made it difficult for us to collect together in person, um, they have been invaluable in keeping me connected with you guys and keeping all of us, I think, connected with you guys. So we're super, super happy that you keep showing up. And as long as you do, we're going to keep presenting them. Um, I have changed the chat over so that you can only chat with the host. And Jamie is a co-host, which means you can chat with her. But we would prefer that you chat just to me so that you do not um, disrupt her train of thought. And we want questions to come um, over my way so I can feed them to her. Although we would prefer that you ask the questions yourselves 
So you can do that by letting us know you have a question and using the raise hand feature. And if you're not sure where the raise hand feature is, you can find that in the participant window in the lower left hand corner of the participant window. Participant window can be launched from the little people in the bottom of your Zoom screen, or um, I think if you're on a phone, they're somewhere in the three dots. Uh, not 100% sure, but up and you'll find it. Find your participant window and you'll see a little blue hand and you will use that to let us know you have a question and we'll call on you when the time comes. Jamie's chat will take a roughly 20 to 30 minutes at the beginning of the um, session and then we'll open up to your questions. Enough for me, except that I am gonna tell you a little bit about our speaker today. And um, there's a lot to be said about Jamie. The first time I saw her perform was just in May. Um, I've heard this name. Uh, I went to see her and Mary Gaucher performing at a local uh, concert venue here. And it was the last live show I saw. It was a stunning show, beautiful. And um, I have since been you know, lurking around um, on their Sundays with Mary programs. Um, recently, Jamie and Mary were uh, ho uh, part of a panel on sound with, for the FAI, and I was so impressed with the way she explained everything and their, um, the tools that she was sharing, and um, it was just great, and I said, we've got to get Jamie in to talk to our people and have more time for Q&A, and so she was gracious enough to say yes, wonderful singer-songwriter, beautiful support person to other wonderful singer songwriters um jamie and i've been having some great chats and i know you are going to get a lot out of this and i will stop bragging on you and spotlight your lovely mug <laughs> myself please turn your attention to jamie harris everybody well thank you so much i'm really excited to be here uh, of course i wish we could be in person but um this is really cool to be traveling to michigan and where everyone else is today so thank you so much for having me um like annie said i am a, a singer songwriter primarily i also uh, am a side person um, over the past three years i've been playing a lot with mary gaucher as a harmony singer and guitar player um, and I want to make it very clear before we get into this that I am not a tech wizard. I am not a, uh, a sound person. I am just a musician who probably like many of you pivoted when the shutdown happened in March and um, I'm just happy to share with you what I've learned um, some by trial, a lot by trial and error over the past few months. And I hope that it's helpful um, to you today. So. I guess uh, before we get into this whole sound check conversation, it really doesn't matter if we don't talk about why it's important to sound good, right? Um, if you're like, Let me, I can just hop on and it's great. Yeah, maybe you can and that's wonderful, but I think it's important to sound great for many, many reasons. Like we have all worked so hard on uh, our songs on our in our presentation um, some of us if you're like me I have to work really hard on my banter because the reason I write songs is because I actually have a deep fear of speaking which I'm working through today <laughs> to be here but uh, so I communicate in songs so you know but we put in a lot of time to make sure that our songs uh, get the, get the attention that uh, they deserve before we send our little babies out into the world to be heard and so we want those songs to be heard well and received well. And as some of you have probably noticed as the lockdown has gone on and on and on, um, that, you know, I see what I do as, well, for one, it helps me. Um, it helps me to stay more sane. It helps me to be in community with people in a way that I couldn't. Um, so on Sundays, my partner Mary and I are hosting a show called Sundays with Mary every Sunday at two o'clock central time. And what we're doing is uh, Mary and I play together. We also bring in Mary's um, violin player, Michele Gazic, who lives in Italy. We're able to bring him in with this technology to be a part of the show. And we have a guest every Sunday. And so it's helped us stay in touch with our musical friends and our community. And it's al it also gives us a chance to kind of give, hopefully, some relief to the people that are listening. Uh, we have you know, several people that are in nursing homes that maybe uh, are not allowed outside of their room right now. And this is their way to be to participate in the world and to get live music. And so 
Uh, I want to make sure that every week we give them the best show that we can, and that involves a sound check. Um, so that's why it matters to me. I'm, I know, you know, also these people are supporting us right now. Uh, I don't have any hits. I make my money playing live music. So uh, I want to make sure that these people know that I am, that it matters to me to sound good. I want to give them a good show. Um, so basically, I'll just walk you through a little bit of our process. Uh, when we book a guest for the Sundays with Mary show, I send them an email that has a lot of detailed information uh, as soon as they're confirmed. If you're working with a guest on your show, uh, it's best if you can send them graphics so they have something to promote the show with. And it's also best to give them as much information as you can up front so that they have time to digest it. A lot of the guests that we're working with on our show may have not streamed at all before uh, they've been on our show. So a lot of times we're actually helping walking walking musicians through streaming for the first time. And um, what I send to everyone in, uh, in the show or that's gonna be on the show is a document that has a lot of information about StreamYard, which is a particular technology that we're using. And it's my understanding that you guys have had some panels about StreamYard before. Um, but what I can share with you today, or I think Annie is prepared to share in the chat, is a Google document that I've set up called a live stream kit. Uh, basically, as our show went on, Mary and I have discovered that a lot of people are just want to know what gear we're using, you know, what kind of mic are we using, uh, what is it plugged into, how does it work, and so I put together a document which can be shared with you guys that has links to purchase everything that we're using and alternatives that we've found to be helpful as well. And within that document, there is also I think about on the let me check here. But the second page, there's a section called software. And in that section, um, it talks about different things that you can use to operate your live stream. There are browser based programs like StreamYard, which we use. Um, you can also use open broadcasting software, OBS, which I think you guys have had some, um, some panels about as well. Um, and so within that document, I've included other Google documents um, that you can click on that'll show you some helpful settings. Um, and I like to give this to you in a link form because what we've discovered by doing sound checks is that, is that these platforms are constantly changing. And I'm sure if you've been live, live streaming, you notice it too. You log into Zoom and all of the settings have changed. Uh, the ways you had it set before are not the same and you have to relearn it. So um, I have taken out some of the guesswork for you and I've included that in the document so you can experiment with those settings. So um, one of that gets into another really good reason to sound check. Um, this uh, Sunday on our live stream, we had my really good friend, Betty Sue. And here's another thing that I recommend if you have the ability to get into a pod with three or four other musicians that you really trust, or maybe if you have a sound person in your life um, that you can call and say, hey, I'm, I think I'm struggling with this Zoom setting or it doesn't feel right to me or I can't tell if it's right. Would you mind hopping on and listening? I cannot express, <laughs> overstate the value of that. So I've been in a pod with Betty Sue and uh, when I log in and something has changed, I can call her and say, hey, Betty, are you having problems with this particular platform? And she'll tell me, yes, this is how it changed. So it's just really great as we're all digesting so much information and spending so much time watching YouTube videos and reading, it just can be really confusing. Um, so it's nice to have the emotional support of that. But this Saturday, um, a lot of stuff was going on and <laughs> there were some parades in the street. And I almost didn't sound check with Betty because Betty and I have been in this pod together. I know that she uh, is really knowledgeable, knowledgeable about streaming. And so I thought, well, maybe we could skip this sound check, but we both said, no, let's go in and do it. And thank goodness we did, because when we went into StreamYard, the settings had changed again within a week. So even if you feel extremely comfortable with the platform, and even if you think your guest, if you are hosting a guest type show or a, a songwriter round, open mic, virtual, um, it's always great to do a sound check because you never know what's gonna happen when you go, when you get into that platform. Um, and another good reason to do a sound check 
uh, is it's kind of like doing a regular show. I don't know if you've ever shown up and all of a sudden your uh, quarter inch is just not going to work that day. And you have, if you don't have a backup, you have to make an emergency run right before the gig and it's really stressful. Um, well, the same thing can happen with streaming. So we had a guest on our show who is an award-winning producer. I mean, high award-winning producer. And he has a wonderful studio. He's extremely knowledgeable, but he's never streamed before. And we ended up doing, which I do not recommend, an eight hour sound check because we just could not figure out what was going on. And we kept bringing people in, kept bringing people in. It must be this problem or this problem. And it turns out, which was the last thing we thought of is, I bet it's just a bad piece of gear. You know, sometimes you can get a brand new interface and the USB that connects it, that one cord can mess up your whole show. Well, had we not done a sound check, we wouldn't have known that that one piece of gear wasn't working. So it's just, a great idea to do that so you can make sure all of your gear is in order. It's also a great opportunity to kind of practice the run of the show or explain it if you are in a guest format. Um, if you are not in a guest format and um, you're just performing on your own, another really valuable tool that you can have is to set up a private Facebook group. Um, I have one, it's just called Soundcheck JH. Uh, I was the only member of it for a long time and now I have another friend that's a member. And that way you can have a friend that, you know, that joins the group that can listen live as you're sound checking because each of these platforms, whether it's Zoom or StreamYard, Facebook, YouTube, once the stream is complete, they're going to process that video. So what you hear on the playback is not an accurate description of what you hear in real time. Also, if you're using a, um, something like Restream or StreamYard, which is a browser-based um, software, what you hear in what they call the virtual broadcast studio is also very different than what you're going to hear live. Um, so setting up a little private Facebook group where you can listen, um, and even sometimes there's enough of a delay that even if you are the only person to listen, you don't have a friend, you can kind of run into the next room and listen and hear what the broadcast sounds like in real time. And that helps you make adjustments. Uh, if you are hosting a guest show like we are, another great reason to check that live broadcast is to make sure that you, you and your guests are about at the same level volume wise. Um, you don't wanna have, you know, uh, especially if a guest is using, uh, like let's say they don't have a great audio setup and they might just be using a computer. Um, that happens, we had Rodney Crowell on our show uh, a few months ago. And you know what? Rodney is a brilliant songwriter and he is a great humanitarian and he does not care about streaming at all. He's just not going to learn it. He doesn't want to learn. It's not important to him, but he would love, he wanted to come on and play some songs. So Rodney is going to be singing in, to his computer. As we know, that sound is really, really harsh. So you have to work with what you can to lower the level of um, maybe your guest volume, or, you know, maybe you have to increase your volume to make sure that they're about the same, because you don't want a jarring difference. Um, let me think about what else. Uh, oh, another thing that we've learned that's been really helpful for streaming for us. Uh, I know a lot of people have talked about it, but of course, uh, getting an ethernet cable can be a huge, super powerful, a big game changer, but also resetting your modem on the day that you do the stream can make a huge difference as well. Um, it depends on who your internet provider is, but they might have a really simple way to reset your modem with uh, an app. Like ours, we have, we have uh, like Comcast and we can send a text message through an app and it says, we are resetting your modem and it'll be done in 12 minutes. That's just another way that you can, that, another thing that we've learned from uh, experience that seems to really improve the chances of our live streams going well. Um, let me think about if I had some other stuff here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so some of the mistakes we made early on, um, I guess, with the live streaming is not checking it. Uh, not checking the actual live stream. I cannot stress enough the importance of having a little Facebook group to listen to um, those streams in real time. Like I said, when you hear 
the stream back, it might make it sound a lot better or a lot worse than what it sounded like in real time. And so you just wanna make sure that that quality is really matched up. Um, now, whether or not you're working on your own or you're, you're dealing with a guest, um, and I think one of the most important things that you can remember while dealing with all of this, and another reason to check your gear, is because the best thing you can do with live streaming is to be comfortable. You know, you, it's for me, I don't know about you guys, but it's pretty weird, even after seven months of doing this, to kind of play into a screen looking at myself. It's, there's a little bit of weirdness to it, right? Um, it's a great opportunity to connect, but it's still a little bit strange. And I know that if something is gonna go wrong, it can be really, really stressful. And that's gonna, your, your audience is definitely going to pick up on that anxiety. So maybe you're looking at this live streaming kit that I've sent and you're like, wow, I really wanna get all of this gear that Mary and Jamie have. Um, and then you get it and you go, you know what? This is so overwhelming to me. I can't dial it in. Um, you know, maybe the best thing for you to do is just to work with the technology that makes you feel most comfortable because that is what's gonna help you have the best show. And of course, sound checking is a huge part of that because just familiarizing yourself with the gear and the technology is really helpful. It definitely reduces stress. Um, another thing that I have that I think Annie might put into the comments here uh, is a little template that I also send to all of our guests, which of course this applies if you're operating a guest show like we are or hosting a virtual open mic, a songwriter series, anything like that. Um, I have a guest fill out this form so that I have an idea of what we're working with gear wise. If you're the host of the show that can really help streamline things. Um, for example, if I know that the guest browser is Safari, I know that I have to tell them to copy and paste the link that I send them for the show into their browser because it's not going to work uh, if Safari is their default browser. So it just, that also can, getting all the information you can from your guests can also help um, eliminate problems beforehand. When I send it, I tell them, by the way, this is how you're going to enter your information for Mary to pay you. And then I strategically put the PayPal or Venmo question as the very last question so that folks seem to actually really fill it out more uh, if, if they know that uh, it involves money. <laughs> so uh, if that's a part of the deal. So um, that is another thing that has been a huge time saver and been really helpful for us. Um, I'm sure I left out some things, but that's kind of what I can initially think about uh, going through, just kind of riffing on uh, what I've done, what we've learned. Uh, are you guys able to op open those documents, by the way, and kind of get a look and see what, okay, cool, great. Um, so any, I don't know if you'd like to open it up to questions or uh, if anyone has questions where I could see your hand and yeah. kind of get specifically into what you want to talk about. So I'm going to um, say right now, if anybody wants to raise your hand and like ask specific questions, there's been a couple dropped in. Um, okay. Well, that's weird. Uh, sorry, Joel. I just saw your text. See how easily I get distracted by the text messages or the <laughs> chat messages. But yeah. So I do have a couple of questions right off the bat that I would love for you to talk about. And, and one of them is, um, you know, you can have great gear, you can have all the settings exactly right. And it can still sound bad. And can you talk a little bit about like adjustments that, you know, folks can think about to make, I don't know whether it's like mic placement or, you know, just things, um, you know, some of the uh, troubleshooting, I guess, that you've experienced. Yeah, think. absolutely. Um, sometimes it really is experimenting with these settings in the platform that you're using. Uh, another thing that's really common is sometimes your settings will just change on you. Uh, you know, I know Eric from the, the, the green, uh, green wood coffee house is here. I'm sure he is exper experienced as a sound person. You know, he's in the same venue dealing with the same gear every time. And sometimes you just show up and the little gremlins are in there. Um, so that's just how it goes. And that's why we do sound checks right at venues to figure out what, what is going on. So um, 
like an example this week when the settings changed on StreamYard with Betty, um, this document that I've given, I think I even say like, these are the settings that I've discovered, but you really want to experiment with them and make sure that they're the right settings for you. Because what I discovered is that as this pandemic continues and, um, and these platforms are discovering the value that they have for presenting musicians, which I think was kind of looked over in the beginning of the pandemic, actually, they are constantly making updates. So the settings that you have on your end or just where uh, sometimes just some stuff is in beta for some people and then it's not for other people, your settings might be different. Um, so it's always just great to check them. Like in StreamYard, for example, um, the settings that we found, and some of you might have uh, noticed this if you're using StreamYard, is they added an option called Stereo. And Stereo, they said, this is the best for musicians. And the first five times we tried it, it when we clicked it, it went into one ear. It sounded like we were going through a garbage disposal and it was just a nightmare. So it's like, clearly they haven't figured this out yet. This is not, <laughs> this is not working for everyone. And I noticed on Saturday when I sound checked Betty, I said, hmm, something weird is going on here. Your settings look the same as mine. What if you just checked that stereo button? And when she checked stereo, it was like angel singing. It was a massive improvement. And like I said, I'm just a musician that's figuring this stuff out by testing it. There's why would it be that it would be the same, that it would be different for Betty than it would be for me? I have absolutely no idea. And the only way to figure it out is by trial and error. And yes, of course, there are certain things you can do, like experiment with mic placement. Um, I, I totally, totally recommend reaching out to the sound people you know in your life, reaching out to um, friends that you know that might be really great at home recording or even some studio engineers or producers you know there are certain things you learn you know if you're uh, you know put you know if you're making a home demo you might want to put a microphone near the 12th fret on your guitar that makes it sound better there are just certain things that can get um, information that you can get from people that are really experienced that at least give you a better place to start from so that you're not just blindly putting microphones uh, and, and creating frustration for yourself. Um, I know it's hard to ask for help, but people are really willing to help. Yeah, I agree. I think having somebody at the other end actually listening to you when you're talking about doing this, you know, is huge. And, you know, when you're playing in a venue, you have a sound guy who's making adjustments for you. And when it's just you and there's nobody at the other end, and if you're in the middle of your live stream and somebody's saying, the guitar is too loud or I can't hear, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then you've got to adjust it while you're doing it, right? So. Yes, and that's another thing too. So uh, to keep in mind, that's a great point. So sometimes when you're live, adjustments need to be made. And that is another situation where sometimes someone will say, wow, it sounds really weird. And then I ask everyone in the comments, is it just for that one person that it sounds weird? And they refresh their browser and it fixes the problem. Um, so you can't always believe every single comment that's coming to you through the live stream. Um, you know, of course, if 45 people are saying your video is blurry, your video is probably blurry. Um, but that's another situation where if you have a really trusted friend that you can say, hey, would you mind just popping in for the first two or three songs and listening and telling me if it sounds great or if I need to make any adjustments? Yeah. Like if Betty Sue is like, girl, your guitar is way too loud. I'm gonna believe her. I'm gonna go, whoops, I need to like readjust my microphone. Um, so having someone you trust to listen, even on the actual live stream is, is really helpful too. That's funny. Yeah, er so Eric, from the greenwood this is he's saying this is why sound i think he meant to say sound guys or sound people generally ignore audience comments <laughs> sound. all right so i'm going to get back into the actual questions from here because i could just sit here and talk to you about this all day um so mark smith was originally asking are you hardwired when you do your shows either now yeah we are hardwired now um which is a great question although we did experience once when we were doing a sound check that there wasn't a difference when we were hardwired and not. And we don't know why that is, but when we reset the modem, that improved the quality of our live streams. Now, this is something I haven't 
checked out yet, but I was telling Annie before, uh, I was on a live stream that's half music, half tech. And there was a tech guy there that told me, and I don't know if this is true because I haven't tried it yet, but I think it's super interesting that with, a lot of times your internet provider will give you just the one box, right? He said, when you get that one box, it actually decreases the power of your internet by 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it would make a difference if you're really, really struggling, or maybe if you're in a rural area to try maybe calling a, a trusted person, or I can even email you this guy's information if you, if you wanna send me an email um, and see what would you suggest that I separate the, the modem and the router? Yeah. If you're, if you're just trying everything and nothing's working that I would, I would look into that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I don't know if this is addresses, but Eric, again, is saying resetting the modem, modem seems like introducing a potential for problems and what problem does it address? I don't yeah. Know. Uh, I mean, we just discovered that, um, I just, that was something I got from another musician who said that that really improved the quality. Um, but we don't do it right before the live stream. We try to do it like the, you know, eight o'clock in the morning for a two o'clock show. Gotcha. Yeah, no, ex good point. Um, okay, so uh, hang on, I'm gonna get to the next question. Uh, Jack, where's your question, Jack? I've lost you, there you go. It, oh, he said is resetting the modem the same as re rebooting? And I'm assuming, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, just new different language. Hi, Jack. By the way, nice. <laughs> to see you. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, I, I have a really good question, and Randy Cohen, I just want you to know I see your question, but we're going to save it for later because I know everybody's curious about this, and so just so you know, I see it, and I might make you ask the question yourself if you want. Um, Elaine Romanelli is. Can you ask her to explain why it might help? Oh, here we are in the modem thing too at the ISP as opposed to power powering cycling it yourself or not uh okay i'm going to reread this can you ask to explain why it might help to reset the modem at the isp end as opposed to powering cycling it yourself mm -hmm. or not doing that so at my end when i reset my modem i'm going to assume this is what you mean elaine i just go down to my modem and unplug it and then plug it back in and it works. And we're going to be real clear right now. I think Jamie's actually not connected to an ethernet right now. Am I right about that? Right now in this room, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not in my normal space. Yeah. So far, so good. Um, yeah. So I mean, that for me, it's just that when I get the paper clip out and do the, ours is like you push it instead of unplugging, plugging, there's like a paper clip and you go into a thing and it's just, you know, we can be on a hike and just text them and they can reset it. So it's just a personal preference, I guess, for me. I don't know if there's a there's a huge difference. It, and basically that they can do it remotely instead of me going, you know, pushing the thing and waiting and saying, is it done yet? Is it done yet? You know, with the anxiety. Um, if I ask them to do it, I get a text that says it's officially been done. Yeah. Awesome. I, that sounds great. Um, Karen, I saw your hand up. Do you want to ask your question so that we have somebody other than me? Is that Karen Oliver? Yeah. Hey. Where are you, Karen? I'm going to put you on the spot. You can unmute yourself now. There we go. It's, it, initially, it said host would not allow me to unmute. <laughs> well, I won't. That I found, but um, I. Yeah, so <laughs> in the beginning, you mentioned that um, you had Mary's violin player coming in and playing with you from another country. And I was wondering, are you doing that live? And how is that well, working? How are you making that, that happen? <laughs> yes, that's an awesome question. So for the Sundays with Mary show, what we're using is StreamYard. Uh, which is a browser-based program that works on Chrome or Mozilla. And they have a free option, or you can also pay. Uh, the paid basically allows you to send it to multiple locations. Um, and we've found that it just, for who we're working with, it's very easy for the most part for our guests because all they have to do is click a link and then they're in the studio. Um, so we've just really, really grown to like that. Um, it's also very easy to put up little banners um, for, you know, your website or your guest information. They just make it pretty, it's just super user friendly. Um, and we found it to be pretty reliable. Um, so Michele, we, I send him a link, a link every Sunday and he clicks it and then he's in the broadcast studio with us. Um, and it's really cool because you can, you know, when you remove someone from the stream, 
no one can see them or hear them. So like in our, in our case, Mary will play two or three songs. Then we'll bring in the guests. We'll both, you know, both uh, art, artists will be on screen and then we'll give the guests the full screen um, for two songs, bring Mary back. And then we go to Italy and we bring in Michele and then he plays a song while we're gone. And then we come back and then we're all on the screen together at the end. Um, it's but you're not playing simultaneously. We're not playing simultaneously. No, 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 no. Oh, is that the question? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood that. <laughs> no, I wish. I cannot wait. Maybe when 5G happens, maybe we can play together in real time. We are so, I feel really lucky that I live with Mary and we can sing together because uh, Karen, as I know, you play with a lot of people and it's important to you to have that musical connection. And we're so missing that now, but we, yeah, it's, it's, we wish we could be playing together in real time. Yeah, yeah, it's true, true for a lot of folks. Okay, so um, I have a good question. Eileen, uh, not me, Eileen has a question. She noticed you and Mary use headsets while performing. How does that improve your live stream? What brand of headset do you suggest? Oh, that's interesting. So um, we, it's, that's also a preference. Uh, sometimes when I'm on Zoom, I actually won't use headphones because I found out right now with the most recent update with Zoom, uh, you can have multiple people on the screen and it doesn't do a weird echo thing, but sometimes it's just to help basically you to try to eliminate as many problems as you possibly can. One being if you're hearing the stream come out of, uh, you know, the speaker, uh, it's there's a potential for the mic to pick it up and it just can create more problems. Um, the headphones I'm using, I know sometimes we have some audio technical ones uh, and I don't know if I didn't. I don't think I put that in the uh, heart in the uh, document, so I'll add it. These are um, these are Sennheiser closed back HD 280 Pro. So where I am now, this is where I do all my home recording, um, and these are these are pretty intense headphones. And oh, and if you don't know the studio trick, a really good thing you can do when you're playing live is to take one headphone and kind of move it behind your ear. And that way you can hear a little bit of the room and um, you can hear the interface. Uh, Cause if you're hearing only yourself you can actually have pitch problems. It's nice to hear some of the room. For real. Especially if you're playing with another person. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna let uh, Louise, I see your hand up. Go ahead with your question. You can unmute yourself. Hey Jamie, we met at ISIS Music Hall last oh, year. Oh yeah, hi Louise. Good see you. Yeah, well, this is fantastic. And uh, my partner and I run a Zoom series on Tuesday night. We have four guests each time. And uh, I guess, first of all, I love the idea of the Google form. And, and what percentage of people actually fill that out? <laughs> a lot you know, more they, now that yeah? I have, yeah, a lot more now that I have uh, told them in the email that this is where you will enter the information for Mary to pay you. It's been a lot better, but sometimes, That's... sometimes it does take a reminder email. So, oh, I guess I should have mentioned that. So I send one email at the beginning that's, you know, has a lot of the information um, and about this is the platform we're using. Uh, here's a document that has information on how to operate the system. If you want, you can click this link and experiment with it on your own. Uh, a little bit to make sure you're comfortable. If you have any questions, I say like 10 times in the email and in the document, if you have any questions, I know this is a lot of information. Please do not feel overwhelmed. Please just call me because I don't want you to be overwhelmed. So that's in there a bunch. And then before the sound check, I send another email that once again has the technical information and has a link to the actual sound check and the graphics again, because I really want the guests to um, help promote the show if they can um, on their yeah. channels. So that's inf that information yeah. is sent twice. <laughs> and and the, uh, my other um, just question was, you talked about the levels. And so if we have four different artists, we've had some problems sometimes with um, someone that wants to do a lot of reverb. Maybe they have a more sophisticated set up with an interface. And we had one instance where we had a singer songwriter on the guitar, the level was just soft and perfect. And then we got a duo that had you know, a big setup and there was so much echo and reverb. Um, but being that my partner and I really are not professional musicians, all we could say was, well, it sounds a little loud, but they wanted to go with that. And so that thus it makes it a lot louder. So do you have any suggestions on how to deal with that? Wow, that's a great question. Um, 
Wow, what a challenging question and a great thing to think I about. I know. I mean, I would just say, hey, you know, if they want to have that kind of production stuff, that's great, but we just need a little less gain. Um, overall gain would be the term to use so that you know, gain. It more matches the show. Another thing to think about maybe um, is, uh, well, I hate to say this like this because my favorite shows are the ones that are super eclectic, you know, but maybe, uh, I don't know, is it like, are you booking the artists like to be paired or is it is it kind of a, um, or, or are you kind of drawing names for who plays on certain days? Um, well, we're, <laughs> we kind of try to make an eclectic, you know, variety. Right. People that we feel our audience will like all four, but you know, there, there are going to be differences. And sometimes we have two or three musicians and different instruments and sometimes just the solo. Um, but every once in a while, there's someone that just um, the level is, is really loud. And of course, you know, the, the audience, the viewer and their end can just turn the volume down a little bit. But we've had some of our audience members say, don't you do a sound check? Why are they so loud and they're not? And we, you know, so we try to you, explain. Yeah, so when you do the sound check, have you asked them, have you guys done a sound check? Maybe you should ask them, like that might be a little, I don't know. I mean, sometimes you're just gonna work with people that aren't team players. We all know that in the music business, that's just gonna happen. You know, you're gonna have some people that are totally go with the flow and other people that are just not team players. But, um, but maybe you just say, yeah, you know, I know that your level is normally set like this, um, but maybe for this show, if you could just take the gain down a little bit, I think it would just, you know, it would help yeah. um, kind of with continuity for the show. Yeah, so, I mean, ended up okay anyway, but <laughs> thank you so much. I'm leaving you on mic here, Louise, because we actually have a question. Yes. <laughs> um, Randy is actually asking, and I'm curious as well, because I think you two are a very good example of what's happening volume-wise, because Louise, you're much louder, which is, um, so it's making, and he's wondering how you're so on mic, and because I don't see a mic on you. Are you just using, what this are you- This is all I've got. Maybe. Oh, we're using that. That's yeah, right. But, yeah. We can't even see it. Um, so that's really a great. That's interesting. <laughs> just, can we talk about gear for a second. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna unspotlight you, Louise. Thank you for that. But that's a really yeah. this was a really good part of the conversation. So, um, Jamie, mm -hmm. we did have a question early on in advance. Brenda sent me a, a slew of questions. I'll throw at you. They hey, should Brenda. be really quick answers. But um, gear. So you did mention the my uh, head, headphones, God, I'm sorry, the headphones, and somebody was asking what was the model. So I don't know if you can say that real quickly again, but then yep. like other gear that you guys it's use. A, it's a, I have to take them off, sorry, so I can't hear you from it. It's, but there's Sennheiser's, uh, here, I'll type it in the thing okay. for anyone. And I will add these to that document. The good thing about those documents being on Google is that I can update them. And anytime you click on that link, you'll have the most updated version. Yeah, and um, then I will create a link for that. Then that's going to answer Joel's question because Joel um, Simpson uh, mentioned that something came through on the link where it looked like it was a private uh, document for Mary. I didn't have any issues opening it, and but if folks are not don't have oh. a Google account or for something reason, um, he did create a Word document. But I, it, these are living, breathing documents, which I think are important to be able to have a direct link to, because as you guys learn stuff and you're adding to it, I think that's amazing. So um, yeah. let me know if it's the uh, the sound check form. Uh, let me know which one it is. And I'll yeah, which one, Joel? Um, and you, um, so, okay, back to gear. So can you just walk us through what gear you're using, mics and interfaces and? Sure, yeah, normally for our shows, we're using an ear trumpet Myrtle. Um, which we have just, we experimented a lot in the beginning and we've just found these ear trumpets to be great. I'm sure you've seen them. A lot of musicians are using them with live streams now. Um, we love it because it's uh, just one mic. So that's uh, one, you know, a lot less things to go wrong, which I found is one of the best things you can do for streaming. Kind of, I mean, Eric can correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I feel like the difference between studio recording or live sound and streaming pretty much the way that we're folk streaming is that it's kind of like when they take the giant Wonka bar and they put it through Wonka vision and it comes out in like a, like a normal size bar. Like we're, 
taking this like big signal and sending it through this tiny thing, that's, that's where it ends up. So the, if you can get kind of one signal going on, that's great. Um, I've also had other artists that have done really well using a mixing board. So uh, they might have some effects on their mixing board. Uh, they're using different microphones or different DIs. And then taking that mixing board with one XLR, plugging that into an interface so that your interface basically acts like an overall gain. So once again, you're mixing separately and then you just have that one overall gain going into the computer. Um, but for us, we're using an ear trumpet, uh, Myrtle, um, which is a great microphone we're loving. And um, then we plug that into a pre-Sona studio channel. Um, for a lot of bluegrass mics or condenser mics, you might not have to do this, but we, we've discovered with the ear trumpet microphone and we discovered at the Folk Alliance panel that a lot of other musicians have bought them and have the same frustration, is that it requires a ton of gain. Um, so with the studio channel, what that gives you is an additional gain. Um, it also gives you some EQ and compression um, uh, options on there too. Preamp, yeah, preamp, exactly, Eric. And there's a link to that in the document as well. So that has been a huge help. So we plug the microphone into the PreSonus studio channel. And then that is connected to a Focusrite interface, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. It's a super affordable um, interface that will connect to your computer with a, um, with a little cable. And uh, so the Focusrite is like our overall volume and that's connected to the computer. Oh, that's, a, that's fascinating. I wondered about that because I looked at your live stream gear and I was like, why do you need both things? But yeah, I agree with you because we have the Ear Trumpet Labs and the gain can be almost all the way up to get it, you know, decent. So um, RJ, it looks like you got your question answered. So I'm skipping it, but if not, raise your hand again. Um, what about cameras and lighting? I mean, this is not really sound related. It just, uh, but can you just give us a quick, or is that sure. also a sheet that you... It is, but yeah, um, Mary has like a Logitech little camera that's been sold out since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I have a cheaper one called a Nexigo camera, HD webcam you can find. Here's another thing to check too on your live streams. Um, no matter what platform you're using, you wanna check your video settings to make sure that they, uh, that they're like HD or whatever, you know, sometimes you can be in standard definition, even if you have a really great camera. Um, another option that works well for a lot of people, and I've used it, um, is there's an app called EpoCam, E-P-O-C-A-M. Mm -hmm. And uh, it allows you to turn your smartphone into a webcam. Because um, for a lot of us, we have one of the most powerful cameras in the world in our hands every day. Um, so that's a great option if, if that works for you. For lighting, uh, we use an Elgato key light, which is a giant <laughs> kind of photography. It's a, it's a gamer light um, that attaches to the, uh, yeah, so I had someone say that EpoCam was a, a fail and I had a problem with that for a long time, but recently they've improved it and it's been working great. Um, so once again, it depends on, depends on your experience, but, um, I had a lot of, str I struggled with it a lot and only recently, I feel like I've been able to recommend it. Um, yeah, lighting we've got what's called an Elgato key light. It's a really sturdy, hardcore, um, key light. I experiment, experimented with a bunch of ring lights. If that's your thing, I normally wear glasses. So ring lights can be kind of difficult for me. Uh, but I think, uh, through my friend, Rebecca Loby, I found like the best, affordable ring light um, if you are you know moving around a lot and that's a good option for you so yeah lighting is forever it has to do with your room and whatever natural light you have in there there's so many variables on lighting we're going to do a whole nother thing on lighting sometime yeah it's exactly. cam is, there's a c and a c there's two c's epoch cam and what's interesting I was going to put the link in here because it's like Canoni or something. You can find it on your i, um, in your, whatever on your app store. But then, right when I was looking it up, you mentioned something about um, Elgato, Elgato uh -huh. lighting, and that's the website that comes up when you click on it's, the e cam. Did they yep. buy? Sorry, this is a geek moment. So, but so I'm putting a link to that. But yeah, yeah. So. 
Oh my gosh, gear. We could have three hours of listing off gear that everybody's using. I think we've done this at our community sessions where people say, oh, this is what I'm using. <laughs> right, exactly. And you know, a good thing to know or to have too is I just some days, like I said, like the gremlins are going to be in your gear. And it's nice to just have like a USB blue mic as a backup or yeah. to have like a little mic that plugs into your phone as a backup. I would say don't, I mean, obviously, like I said in the beginning, it really matters to me. And I'm sure it matters to all of you. That's why you're here to learn, to learn or soak up as much information as you can about this. Cause we want to put on the best shows that we can. But I think also people are understanding that sometimes things just go wrong. And if you can remain calm and just continue to be of service with your music and offer people the best show that you can, that that goes a long way too. Yeah. Amen. Okay, we're going to go back to the gallery. We've got Bart Moore sitting there waiting. Bart, you can unmute yourself and ask your question, sir. Surely. Um, two fairly quick ones. One, I, I know that you, you talked about the ring light that you use. I think it's a Niwar, something like that, that you've used in the yeah. past. Is that That's not what you've got on now, though. Your lighting now is really good. Right now, I've got the key light. Okay. All right, and then the other question has to do with, you said you used the focus right direct into the computer. Mm -hmm. I've tried uh, going through a Yamaha mixer, then into the focus right with two XLR cables, and then from focus right into the computer. It tends to really garble the sound. Can you describe what your connection is from mixer to focus right to computer? Yeah, so we're actually not using a mixer right now. Uh, but the mixer I have is just a, I, I, I don't even know, it's like a, like a cheap Max Mackey mixer. Um, it's not a Yamaha, but I haven't had that trouble. So I don't know, actually, I don't know if, if uh, Eric would, would know if, if what that might be, uh, what kind of gremlins those might be, but sorry not to be able to answer that question for you. So you just, you go direct into the focus, right? And then from there into the computer. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well. Right now, yes, we're using a studio channel to the, the microphone is plugged into, and then that's connected to the focus right, and the focus right is connected to the computer. Um, but I, I've done several sound checks with other artists that are using a mixing board into a um, an interface, and they haven't had any problems. So I'm yeah. not I'm not seasoned enough to to fix that. For I wish I could. I want to <laughs> be able to answer that. I'm sorry. So, um, Bart, I'm going to throw, we have an answer from Sherry. Um, hi, Sherry. Sherry Elric from Canada. Um, usually garbled means it's just going into the laptop and the user doesn't realize it's not routed properly through the platform. So may or may not be that often check the settings on whatever the platform you're using. It may not have chosen the right audio path. So, yeah, you know, there are so many variables looking through all this. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why, honestly, one of, I mean, for us, the type of show that we're hosting is like in your, we want it to feel like you're in our living room, like with Mary and Jamie and our friends are coming over and we're going to catch up, you know, probably piss a couple people off of talking about politics and then play some music. And then, you know, we all have a good time. And then like, you know, it feels like we're going to go out to lunch afterwards. You know, that's the vibe of our show. It's a very like homegrown intentionally. It's that way. Um, you know, so if, if your vibe is that you want to use more effects, that's a part of your sound, then, then I totally admire that and think that, yeah, absolutely go for that. Cause that's your sound and you want to, you want your music to be represented in that way. I totally get it. Um, we're lucky that the setup that we have that makes sense for our show also just is like a chain of things where very few things can go wrong. It's just one microphone one XLR, one chord, two chords, really. That's, yeah. All right, but before we get to Katie's question, I just want to say that something you said at the FAI thing was, I think you brought up the um, keep it simple, the KISS method, like keeping it simple. And I think that is obviously the best advice ever. Don't yes. start getting more complicated until you got your simple part down. So Katie, hi. Hello. Um, first of all, this is so helpful. Thank you very much. 
And um, I I was wondering, um, I'm starting a new, I'm starting a, a StreamYard series tonight and I got a, I'm making a little video, like a intro video, uh -huh. like a, like a theme song kind of. Um, and I'm, do you, I was wondering if you had any experience with like video sharing via StreamYard and like tips on that. Yeah. So you're using as like an intro video or slideshow that'll play like as part of the show or is like a pre-stream? In my dream, like the show goes live at 7.30 and then the show, and then this little like 30 to 45 second video plays. And maybe it also plays as an outro too. I haven't figured that out yet. That's great. So in StreamYard, you have the ability, as long as the video is less than five minutes, you can upload it directly um, into StreamYard. There's a section there. I think it looks like a little, like a, like a painter's thing, whatever they have, the paint on it. And um, I realized I have no idea what that word is. I <laughs> totally skipped art and went to music, but um, sure somebody saved me in the comments. But uh, anyways, <laughs> it's, it, it's called brand. And, and um, so if you're running multi different kinds of shows, actually, that's a great tool. The brand, like I have one that's Sundays with Mary. I have one that's just Jamie Harris. I've got one when we do a show um, you know, just the two of us. And so you can put in like your customized colors, um, in that brand. So when the, when the, uh, graphics pop up, they're that color. Um, but yeah, you, you can upload a video to that section as long as it's under five minutes. If you have a video that you want to play that's longer, um, like I've run a show on StreamYard where we had four artists that were live and one artist that sent like a 45 minute pre or 30 minute pre recorded video. What I did is I um, share, you can do like a, it's kind of like a screen share um, in Chrome. I think it's called like a tab share. Um, so I had that ready to go at the start of the show. Um, and in YouTube, I had uploaded the video to YouTube. Uh, you could also use Dropbox, anything that is browser based. Um, and then it, it, if you're familiar with StreamYard, it's like one of your guests when they're at the bottom of the little show in the, in the backstage area. And then you can click it and it puts him into the show. And so it looks like he was really live, mm -hmm. even though he wasn't. Um, so for anything that's over five minutes, you know, you're, you're gonna have to look into an option like that, but anything under, um, you can do that. So also if you're like looking to improve uh, kind of the, you know, the brand of your show, you can use Canva, which is a free, um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but it's a free kind of design, um, platform where you can create things that are, you know, Instagram size, or you can just Google YouTube thumbnail and it'll give you the exact format size. You can create slideshows on Canva and save them as a video um, and then upload that as part of your pre-show as long as it's under five minutes. So we've added that to the show now where it has, you know, we'll be live soon. Tell us where you're listening from, you know, here's where you can buy merch. Um, and that just adds a little, a little something that's fun that gives us time to pin the donation comments while the video is live. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. I think we're going to have another, um, we've been talking about doing a tech talk on Canva just because <laughs> it comes up on almost absolutely every single talk, but I think graphics are a, a really good discussion. We're running out of time. Thank you, Katie. I'm going to remove your lovely mug. Um, Joel Simpson, you got a quick one. I'm going to go, let's go ahead. We're going to make you your, our last live question. And Jamie, that... thank you for your time today. First of all, oh, um, thanks, Joel. it's really helpful, but, um, what I was going to ask you, if you could quickly go over how you brought in that longer video on StreamYard. Yeah. So, um, let me actually, let me see, uh, da, 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 da. see if I can just like pull it up real quick so I can actually walk you through it. What I did was that I uploaded it. Uh, I uploaded a video to YouTube as an unlisted um, YouTube link. And then if I pull this, Malcolm Holcomb's going to start singing, and that's actually totally fine with me. Um, <laughs> enter the broadcast studio. Okay, so there's a section at the bottom of StreamYard next to the camera mic settings called Share Screen. So if you click that, um, it has three options at the top, your entire screen, application window, or Chrome tab. And what I did is I selected the tab that has a YouTube video. And at the bottom, there's a section where it says share audio. You want that to click, you want to click that so that um, the people are hearing the audio coming from YouTube. And you click share. 
and then um, it pulls it up like it's a guest in StreamYard. So when you remove it, it's backstage. And when you add it to the stream, you can make it, you know, full screen and the video populates the whole StreamYard screen. Yeah, that's how I've done it. There might be an easier, softer way to do that. And I just haven't found it, but it's that's worked for me. Yeah, unfortunately, the yeah, the whole video streaming thing. We've had a couple of questions. Um, we had a question about video and it's great. I, I love this conversation. I'd love to keep it going longer, but we vow to keep our tech talks um, a little bit on the our side. So it's I, a lot. Um, I know it's a lot and it's a lot of information right now and it's great. And we are coming up um, with a, uh, there's a video talk. Jim Henry is going to come and share um, his awesome multi video process that he's doing um, that's coming up in December. We have a tech talk next week coming up. Louise Baker, who you heard from with questions earlier is, and her partner, Bruce Swan, are going to do a talk on creating a streaming EPK for all you artists out there um which is wow. a really great thing to have um and we've got a whole lot more we are actually our tech talks are booked up through the year for those that we're going to have we're going to skip a few because of the holidays but um lots of great stuff coming up before we go down there i just want to say once again jamie this has been incredibly great and wonderful and you are so gracious and you're sharing with all this information and everything creating these documents that you're sharing with everybody is so awesome and we thank you well, thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. And if anyone, if you know, we didn't get to your question today, or if something comes up and you're struggling, um, you can email me up. I can put it in the comments. It's Jamie, which is spelled weird at folkhelper.com. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, answer your questions or send you any additional resources I have. Um, there are, I forgot to mention this, there are a lot of great support groups on Facebook too um of musicians who have gathered on facebook to work through these problems um one is called like music in quarantine live stream sanity group if you if you kind of just search live streaming you'll find them and that's really helpful too yeah i agree there's been a lot of people um collecting and we're learning from each other so i there is i think you can save the chat friends if um you just click the little three dots um, but I think you're only going to see the stuff that was sent to everybody. You're not going to see the individual questions. So I've posted Jamie's links a few times. I've also posted some farm links. You've got Jamie's email now. Um, please go uh, check out her Patreon page. Support if you can. I think, you know, supporting as many artists as you possibly can at a buck a month can be, you know, a hundred people doing a dollar a month is your electric bill, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, Thank you again, Jamie. So let's do a, a well, we're going to do a gallery view applause while I give my outro speech. All right. And so the whole world of Facebook is going to see all y'all. So if you want to unmute your videos and let us see your waving hands in gratitude to our wonderful speaker today, Jamie Harris, please do look her up. Her music is beautiful. Um, and she is a beautiful person. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you look Farm Virtual Connections. I'm trying really hard to keep that updated, but we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, our next, we also have a Folk DJ Peer session tonight, you guys. So, and that's wide open, even though it's for Folk DJ, like it says Folk DJ, but they all welcome uh, participation from everybody. And tonight's discussion is continuing the diversity in the playlist. So it's a great topic. And I um, just accidentally did something really weird with my keyboard, but you're all still here, so that's good. It looks like everybody disappeared from the participants window, but you're still here. So yay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for supporting what we're doing here at Farm and we are doing it for you. So please send us um, your suggestions and uh, stay in touch. Take care, everybody. I hate this part. We're gonna say goodbye now. <laughs> Jamie, I'll be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.